Hi third graders, it's Mrs. Burke here. I hope you had an awesome weekend and got to enjoy all the sunshine that we had and got uh, to spend plenty of time outdoors, hopefully. So this is an exciting week because we're starting a new math unit and it's known as geometry. So I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this unit. And I think, um, you know, you'll be happy to do something different. So today's lesson is going to be an overview of geometry and it's really going to focus on a lot of vocabulary. So I'm going to go through some of these vocabulary words with you and give you a couple of examples. And then I also think it would be a good idea to make yourself some flashcards with some of these words because you're going to see them throughout the unit. So it's really important that you get a solid understanding of what these words mean and what they look like in examples. So. We're going to start by talking about a plane shape. And a plane shape, another word for that is 2D or two dimensional. So a plane shape is a shape on a flat surface that's formed by points that make curved paths, line segments, or maybe both. So basically a plane shape is a 2D shape that's flat. It has length, and it has width, but it does not come up off the paper. That would be known as 3D. 2D, 2Ds are those flat shapes, okay? So when we're looking at flat shapes or plane shapes, we wanna also pay attention to different features that they might have. So the first um, word I wanna introduce you to that you'll see on a plane shape is a point. And a point, is an exact location. And lines and line segments can have many, 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 many points. For example, here I drew a line and on it I placed points. These are exact locations. And you deal with these all the times in number lines. When we use our number lines, um, where we usually label them, those are all points, okay? So just like this one, a point. Next word I'm going to introduce you to is the word line. And line is something you've also used many, many times in your life. You're standing on line at the grocery store where your teacher might tell you to line up and get ready for your special. So a line is a straight path that continues in both directions. And this is the key part here, both directions. So. This is an example of a line. And the reason I know it continues in both directions is because of this arrow here that tells me it still continues off my paper this way. And the arrow here, which tells me it also continues off the paper that way. And this is also familiar on number lines. We remember we could start a number line at the number 50 and there would be numbers before it and there would be numbers after it that keep going on and on and on forever. So it has to be straight and has to continue in, um, it has to continue on, but in both directions in order to be a line, okay? The next word I wanna teach you about is when you take this line and you just want a little piece of it. You don't want it to go on and on, you just wanna take a piece of that line off. We are gonna call that a line segment. A segment is a piece. So a line segment is a piece of a line. And that's a piece of line with two endpoints. And in, what's an endpoint? <laughs> it's a point used to show a segment of a line. So we'll go through both of these together right now. So this is not a line because I could see an endpoint, right? Those are the ends. So this is an endpoint here, which means it doesn't continue on. It stops right here. And then this is an endpoint here. It stops right there. It doesn't continue past that. So because I have two clear endpoints, I know where it starts and I know where it stops. This is not a line because it's not continuing. Instead, this is just a piece of a line known as a line segment. And the starter and stopper of my line segment is my end point. All right. Now, what happens 
if I know where I want my line to start, but then I want it to keep going on and on and on and on and on in the other direction, that's known as array. Array is gonna have just one endpoint, like a starting point, and then it's gonna keep going, but just in one direction. So maybe I'm gonna give this the number 10. Like I like to tie this back to number lines for now, since we're very familiar with that. If I wanna call this 10, this could be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it could keep going on and on, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, but I know it's gonna start here. I'm not gonna have numbers smaller than this starting point. So this is known as a ray. All right, again, array. So these are all the vocabulary words you'll have to know when we're talking about these 2D plane shapes. So let's go, um, I wanna take one quick look at this, um, the line segment part. A line segment is a piece of a line. And when we're talking about 2D shapes, you're going to be looking at line segments um, very carefully. So a line segment is a piece of a line. So if it wants to know how many line segments, you're going to count the sides. These are each pieces of lines and you can't see them, but when you get to a corner, that's an endpoint. Okay. So this would have one, two, three, four, five, six line segments. Then my next plane shape would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven line segments. And then finally, this 2D plane shape would have one, two, three, four line segments. So those are what line segments are. Now, when you're looking at a plane shape, sometimes your um, figure or your shape is going to share a starting and a stopping point. For example, a square. When I make a square, I, let's say, start here and I do, here's one line segment, here's another, here's another, and then here's another. Now, when I made my shape, I started here, but I also ended here. And it's nice and closed up in a circle. If I start here, I'm going to go back to that point to end. So I'm going to end there. So these two shapes have a special name or a special characteristic. They are called closed shapes. They start and end at the same point. Now, what if you have a shape looking like this? I'll draw a shape that you use all the time um, in math, like this. That little greater than, less than, right? This started here and I went to here and then to here and I was done. When I ended, it ended in a different place than it started. So this cannot be called a closed shape. <coughs> Excuse me. This is gonna be known as an open shape. And this open shape, you can see there is actually an opening, right? There's like a hole in it. It's not all connected. So that is why we call it an open shape. It does not start and end at the same point. So let's take a look at a couple of examples and see if we could identify them as opened or closed. So let's start with this shape over here. I'm gonna think about where I'm starting. I'm starting here, going around and around, and I'm ending here. Start, end. I didn't start and end at the same place, so this is open, and you can tell it has an opening in it. So this is an open shape. Down here with my triangle, if I start here, one, two, three, I end at the same point I started. So it's closed. And you can see that there's no gaps or spaces. All my line segments are connected. Next, the shape here, it looks like a U. Down, down, up. 
I started here, I ended here. So this must be open. And look, there's a big opening. I have a circle. I went around and I ended in the same place that I started. So this is closed. Up top, there's a little zigzag. I started here, down, 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 down. Ended here, so that is open. And finally, I start here. I go down, 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 end up here. I start and stop at the same place, so this is closed. Okay, so that's the difference between an open shape and a closed shape. So like I said, today's lesson is gonna focus heavily on this vocabulary. When you're answering your questions, the vocabulary is in your unit. So make sure you're going back and checking over the definition about what these words mean. This is your first day in the unit, so it's gonna take a little practice getting used to what these words mean. All right, if you wanna, Go above and beyond, make yourself some flashcards like I did and just go through them every, you know, hour. Just, there's a commercial on TV or you're taking a snack break, sit there with your pile and go through it quickly. And the, the more comfortable you are with these words, the easier geometry is going to feel for you. Okay, um, best of luck today. Enjoy the geometry unit. It's so much fun. I know we're gonna love it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care, Stuart.